all military titles. RT's Alex Mihailovich picks up the story. With undeniable ties to now deceased convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein and accused of sexual abuse himself, Britain's Prince Andrew is in a lot of trouble. And it looks like he's getting little sympathy from his countrymen. Obviously he's done some pretty naughty things and I think it's obviously true. Well, it seems very true, but from what he's doing, it seems a bit odd, it's just hiding away a bit. A US district judge has refused to dismiss a civil lawsuit against Prince Andrew, in which an American woman has accused the British royal family member of sexually abusing her when she was 17 years old. He knows what he's done, and he can attest to that, so. The prince's lawyers see it a little differently. They are arguing that Virginia Gouffre's lawsuit should be thrown out of court because of an old legal settlement she had with Jeffrey Epstein, who she claims set up sexual encounters with Prince Andrew. However, the judge said that a $500,000 settlement between Epstein and the accuser didn't involve the prince and didn't bar a suit against him now. Here's attorney Gloria Allred, who is representing victims of Jeffrey Epstein. The prince is going to be in a world of hurt, in a world of trouble, not comfortable to have to sit there and answer questions in this lawsuit, which is, alleges that he was sexually inappropriate with uh, Virginia when she was only 17. And she alleges she was sex trafficked to him by Jeffrey Epstein. The accuser sued 61-year-old Prince Andrew in August, saying she was coerced into sexual encounters with him back in 2001 by Jeffrey Epstein and his companion, Ghislaine Maxwell. Epstein, 66, died in a Manhattan jail cell under mysterious circumstances in 2019 while awaiting a sex trafficking trial. And Maxwell, who's now 60, was recently convicted of sex trafficking and conspiracy charges in a federal court in New York. Gouffre said she was sexually abused by Andrew at Maxwell's London home, at Epstein's New York mansion, and at his estate in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Besides trying to get the case dismissed, Andrew's defense lawyers have also attacked the accuser's credibility and motives. Back in October, they said that she filed the lawsuit with the goal of achieving another payday at his expense and at the expense of those closest to him. This is what Virginia Gouffre's lawyer had to say about the argument. We expect the defense to always attack the victim or the accuser, and that's what they do. But the allegation that someone is only filing a civil lawsuit to get a payday is just uh, an ad hominem attack. While Prince Andrew awaits his day in court in the US, back in Britain, he's being punished for his alleged behavior. Today, Queen Elizabeth II stripped her son, Prince Andrew, of all his honorary military titles and patronages. Andrew continues to deny the charges. For News on RT America, I'm Alex Mihailovich. For more on the Prince Andrew saga, we are joined by Hillary Fordwich, president of the Strelmark Business Development Consultants. Now, Hillary, usually you are talking money, business, economics on our hit finance show, Boom Bust, but many don't know um, that you actually have a lot of knowledge of the royal family. Now, we have not seen a royal family member since probably Edward VIII abdicated the throne less than a year after his coronation, but that was his choice. He left to marry a twice divorced American woman. To have the prince get all of his honors, even the title of your royal highness removed, what does this do for the monarchy? What is it like right now in the UK, this house of cards tumbling down? Well, pleasure to be with you, Farron. And you're right, um, yes, I, I have some connections. I know some people that are very connected to the royal family. And it, it's really actually, thank goodness, actually, this has happened because it's a great pity that Prince Andrew didn't do this himself. He should have done the decent thing a while ago. What actually occurred, a few things, a number of things here. Prince William and Prince Charles have taken a very strong stance. Um, they have thought this, all this conduct is absolutely ghastly. Of course, the queen has been torn. Um, this is still her son. Uh, but it is great that she has done the right thing and she's acted swiftly. 152 former military officers submitted a letter. Um, they were former Royal Air Force, Royal Navy, and um, the the army submitted a letter requesting that this is what she does. Um, they said that any other military officer would have been um, dishonorably discharged and that this would be the decent thing to do, that he should have stepped down himself. And they urged her saying, we know that he is your son, but that we urge you to um, remove his military titles um, and his honor honoring military titles. And so um, she did move swiftly to do so. There has been numerous discussions with inside the royal families. And of course, Princess Anne has been uh, very strident in her comments about this. And when in doubt, the queen will always do the right thing by what is referred to by the family as the firm. Um, I think also what is important about the statement that was released is that Prince Andrew is going to move forward with the legal case, but as a private citizen. That is what Buckingham Palace has now stated. Um, I think there's great relief across the UK with people that I've spoken to, um, businesses alike and individuals, because why? Because this finally basically removes the royal family in terms of him being his association. Now he is a private citizen, albeit he'll always be a second son of the Queen. Uh, but it is obviously a ghastly, a ghastly stain. He has nine honorary military titles. One of them, Farron, of course, was that he is the was the honorary colonel of the Grenadier Guards, and the Trooping of the Colour is one of the very first events next year uh, for the, sorry, this year in June for the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And there was no way he was going to be out front leading that. And I can tell you, there is no way he's going to be appearing on the balcony at Buckingham Palace again beside the Queen during those Platinum Jubilee celebrations. So this is the right thing, and it's good that it's happened. And you know, Hillary, it's going to be interesting because, you know, you think of the Queen. She has met world leaders from around the world in her more than 50 years of ruling the UK. She's always been yeah. just this classy, diplomatic woman. So I can't even imagine what she's going through right now. But one of the other things that she did, too, is she said, I am not paying your legal fees, son. So do we kind of know what's going to be in the works for Prince Andrew? I mean, he's going to need a strong legal team. <laughs> 
Well, he, he had a strong legal, legal team. He's already had to um, sell the Swiss chalet and Bourbier, um that he had. He did not go on the last uh, holiday that his wife, uh, the, uh, Sarah Ferguson, went to with his, the two, um, his two daughters. They went over there over the, the Christmas holidays. He did not go, which is good. He should not go. Um, he actually recently did something that I thought was rather abhorrent. He just bought recently a new Bentley in, in addition to his two Range Rovers. That probably has to be liquidated. Uh, yeah. But he's going to need all the money that he can get because he will need extensive legal fees. Um, now, initially, something about um, a settlement. There's been lots of talk back and forth about the settlement also. Um, initially, um, there was talk of, you know, her maybe settling and he was very bullish that no he would not settle then allegedly purportedly he his his legal team had made um some sort of um, murmurs about perhaps wanting to settle and now she virginia um robert scufre has come out and said that she would only settle if there was some sort of public apology and that would be in not only the probably probably purportedly the millions but maybe even tens of millions and yes you are totally right Farron. this would be his own funds the queen is not stepping in to pay any of this now yeah no. but he might want to rethink about selling those cars now but my other last question to you is, is you do have those where they either love the monarchy or they hate the monarchy does this kind of add to those who are not for the monarchy and saying, look, it's just another rich guy got away with it. But, you know, at least now the, you know, the, the chickens are coming home to roost. But does this, do you think, damage the monarchy or is it just get them out of here so we can kind of save face? Well, it has damaged the monarchy. There's absolutely no doubt about that. In the court of public opinion, it doesn't matter what happens in this case. It has been a lose-lose situation for the monarchy. And very interesting, going back to the beginning of this conversation, Farron, when I mentioned that letter from 152 um, military, or former military uh, officers, uh, veterans, that came, that was released by a group called um, the Repub Republic. They are Republicans, which means, not like the, with a little r, not like Republicans in America, but it means they would rather have a republic, in other words, no monarchy. There are those in the UK who don't want to have a monarchy. And yes, they see this as an indication of a privilege, actually the words in the UK, it's com common in the UK, a, a privileged practice meaning sort of an idiot and somebody with, with, with ghastly judgment. <laughs> However, um, generally, I would say across the UK, and it's not for me to, to, to um, ever address, and no one can speak for the entire nation, but generally across the UK, of course, the Queen is very popular. In a recent YouGov poll, of course, she remember, remains the most popular member of the British royal family. Interestingly, Prince Andrew once, was once many years ago, was at the top of that list, and he has now plummeted to the bottom. Less than 6% of the British public ever believed anything in that disastrous BBC interview with Emily Maitlis um, in 2019, and that was him shooting himself in the foot, and what they call in, in English football, um, a home goal. <laughs> That was the beginning of the end, and that's when he stepped back. That was the end. And to answer your question succinctly, mm -hmm. um, people then thought that this was a ghastly event. Hillary Fordwich, great to have you on. Loved all of your insight. We're going to get you back on this story. Thank you so much. And that is our news, folks. We hope you learned something. If you've got friends looking for a different newscast and not like the rest of them, send them our way. As always, good night, folks, and may the good news always be yours.